Does believing that you cannot lose your salvation give you a license to sin? In this back and forth discussion between can a person be saved today and then after sin lose their salvation, forfeit their salvation, whichever terminology you want to use, one accusation that gets hurled often is that believing in one saved, always saved, or eternal security gives a person a license to sin because they feel like, well, I'm saved, then I can't do anything to lose it. I can go ahead and live how I want to live. But is that true? Well, I think that's probably an unfair assessment. As a matter of fact, I know it is. Here's why I say that even without looking at the scriptures, we already know that every last person on the planet sins. The people who are not saved, who commit some of the same sins that Christians commit, are they doing so because they feel like they have a license to sin? No, they don't need. No, that no, that's not the case either. What about the person who doesn't believe in one saved, always saved? They sin also. What's your reason for sinning? Do you feel like you have a license to sin? Do not blame the fact that people who hold to this view who also may sin, do not accuse them of doing so because they feel like they have a license to sin. I have met people, regardless which side of the aisle they're on, who have sinned. And it's not fair to say that that person sins because they feel like they have a right or a license to do so. A true Christian, Jesus describes what a true Christian is, a sheep. We follow him. And a true follower, though he may sin, does not have the intention or the desire to sin and to live in sin. The fact of the matter is we all sin and we don't need a doctrine, a belief to give us a reason to sin. We do so because that is our flesh's desire. Paul puts it this way in Romans seven nineteen. He says, for the good that I want to do, I do not do, but I practice the very evil that I want to do. But if I'm doing the very thing that I do not want, I am no longer the one doing it, but sin which dwells in me. This is Paul saying this. And so are we to say that Paul has a license to sin? No, obviously not. This is just something that is in all of us that we struggle, that we fight with. It rears its head every now and then, hopefully not as often as it did in the past before we were saved. And even as we got saved, we're not going to be sinless, but we should sin less as we move along in our walk. This this process of sanctification should take hold and we should be better off today than we were a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago. Now, for someone to state that they believe in eternal security, well, it's because there are some passages that, that give us cause to say so. Jesus says that he's come to do the will of the Father in John 6. And what is that will? That he should lose none, but raise him up in the last day. Similar to what he said in John 10, that I give them eternal life, they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Yes, Corey, but you can leave. But he just stated that sheep follow, sheep hear, sheep follow, sheep, when they hear another voice, they turn the other way. So I would not say that though a person cannot be snatched out of his hand, that they can turn around and leave when he just spent the time saying that a sheep would not leave. However you fall on this topic, you may or may not be convinced, that's fine. But we need to get away from this argument that really is a foolish argument, if we if we think about it, to state that a person who believes in eternal security has a license to sin. Again, you don't believe in eternal security, but you sin. What gives you the license to sin? Then? What is your cause? What's your reason? If the reason for this other person is because they feel like they have a license to sin, then why do you do so? A person who believes in eternal security, that gives them pause to focus on the goodness of the Lord, that he is the one that's keeping them. And the proof of us being believers is not the thought, is not the doctrine, it's not holding to the doctrine. You can believe in one saved, always saved, and not be a Christian. That could, that's a fact. However, we want to make sure uh, to verify that we are his, and what does so? Well, how we live. That's a good way to validate our walk with the Lord not a doctrine. And so let's just be better as Christians, not hurling certain accusations that can go both ways. Instead, let's do our very best to be Bereans, search the scriptures out. And, and if we disagree, fine, we disagree, but let's disagree with scriptures in mind. Amen.